I read from uh, Prophet Isaiah, chapter 45. And uh, in the bulletin, you have just first verse indicated, but I will read first three verses in my translation. Thus says the Lord to God's Messiah, to Cyrus, I took him by right hand to subdue nations before him and to disarm strong kings, to open gates before him. They will not be closed again. Cyrus, I will go before you and level your path. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures hidden in darkness and wealth stored in secrecy. That way you will know it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. Thus ends our reading from prophet Isaiah. And there is a question to be asked. How could Isaiah, such a dominant prophet of the Hebrew Bible, call a pagan emperor the Messiah of the Lord, anointed one of the Lord? It is so surprising that some American Christians use this verse to explain and justify their servility towards our current president. If Isaiah can call pagan emperor Cyrus Messiah, then evangelicals can also toady this problematic and morally corrupt leader. It is a crazy logic on so many levels and unfair to history and unfair to Cyrus. But Isaiah himself was hardly alone to have such high appreciation of Persian Emperor Cyrus. Many peoples of Middle East welcomed the Persian Empire because after brutality and abuses of Neo-Assyrian and Neo-Babylonian empires, Persian rule was like a gulp of fresh air. It was enlightened, rational, and religiously and culturally tolerant. People were not forced to change their religion. They were not moved by decrees or against their wills. To the contrary, they were allowed to go back home, like Israelites or people of Judea were. And when the Greek historian Herodotus wrote about these early Persians, starting with Cyrus, and Greeks did not have any big appreciation for Persians, they fought wars together, but he characterized Persian ethos in this way. They brought up their children, teaching them just three things. To ride well, to shoot straight, and to speak the truth. It might look like three militaristic principles, but within the context of their society, they meant much more and Persian Empire would not exist for centuries if it was just based on militarism. It was deeper, and we'll look into it today. And we start with that advice to ride well. And this is not only about riding to a battle. This is about cosmopolitan nature 
of the Persians. You need to understand that eventually, not immediately under Cyrus, but very soon, they ruled the territory from Afghanistan on east all the way to Bosporus on west. All the way from Armenia to the north to Sudan down in the south. When you measure that, it is about the size of United States. And without air travel, think about it. You need horses and be able to ride well if you want to cover that and administer that kind of span of land. And they governed diverse peoples, diverse cultures, diverse religions, and diverse languages. Persians themselves ended up of having five capitals. Not one, five. And, part, and they were moving during the year or over the time from one capital to the other. So royal court would move from one to another to another, sometimes returning in the same year back to the previous one. It was to embrace different peoples and different cultures. And they used in their communication, you know, eight major languages. We would probably call them these days official languages. Old Persian, Aramaic, Akkadian, Median, Greek, Elamite, Sumerian, Egyptian. Eight different languages. Multilingual administration. And they embraced also different religions. They had respect and ask for prayers, of course, from their own Zoroastrian religion, but also from the Greeks in Turkey, Asia Minor, from Jews in Jerusalem, from Egyptians in their temples, of course, from Babylonians in Babylon. And you have on a cover of bulletin, there is a picture of so-called Cyrus Cylinder, and that is after Cyrus had taken Babylon, but at the same time granted the continuation of the culture and religion in Babylon. So Jews were allowed to take their positions and go back and rebuild Jerusalem and their temple in Jerusalem. And Babylonians were granted the same grants of continuing their religion in Babylon. And it is written, I mentioned Akkadian language, it is written in Akkadian language in Babylonian script. So it is proving that they were multicultural, multi-religious people. They respected diversity of languages, cultures, and religions. And I wish to our scouts and all of us to ride well, to visit, to learn and embrace beauty and diversity of this world. I was born behind the Iron Curtain and confined into a very small country in Europe under totalitarian regime. We could not travel, we could not visit people just a few miles away from us, living, say, in West Germany, or in France, or Spain. That was completely out of question. Learning other languages, only Russian. No other languages. You have opportunity to learn other languages, do that. You have opportunity to travel, do that, and resist building iron curtains on borders, walls on borders. We need more bridges, not more walls. That is my wish for our Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 
for all of us. Next is to shoot straight. The original language had shooting from a bow. But again, that was so much more. Persians were disciplined soldiers. Assyrians, Babylonians, and Egyptians, when they won a battle, they terrorized those whom they crushed, their enemies. They humiliated them and tortured them very badly, and they're proud of it, and they show that on their bus reliefs in Assyria, for instance. And I would not go into details. Come to Bible class and I'll show you pictures and, and so on. But uh, Persians did not do that. They had their army under control. And so enemies often defected because they knew that they could do that and they'll be treated well. Shooting straight is about keeping higher moral ground and being just and having magnanimous spirit. Magnanimous, magnanimous spirit. Shooting straight is about honesty, valor, and fair play in all aspects of life. And it has many benefits. If you treat others, including your enemies, fairly and with respect, you can win them over. And Persians clearly did that. For instance, those broken iron doors, which are mentioned in our reading from Isaiah, that happened. There was a skirmish between Persians and Babylonians, two days' march from Babylon. Persians won that skirmish, but war could continue for much longer. But the Babylonian soldiers just disrespected their emperor, and Babylon opened the doors, opened the gates, and Persian army came in unopposed. Here is an example of benefits of treating others respectfully and well. Persian army was also composed of all different nationalities they ruled. And they were depicted on their images as coming to audiences with emperors armed. They clearly trusted their subjects. They were not afraid of them. Think about it. Mexicans and Jamaicans and so on coming to visit a president fully armed. Yes, you can say it is an propaganda. And yeah, it might be to some degree. But it tells you that they had respect to those whom they governed and they respected and trusted backwards. I wish it to our scouts and also to all of us this shooting straight. That is to adopt full-heartedly the fair play in our lives. It is a liberating strategy, not being ashamed or scared of others. Playing fair in war and in every other aspect of the life. And finally, we come to the speak the truth. For the Persians, this was actually the most important part. Of course, speaking truth is also important for military. Without truth, it is impossible to command any army. But truth is important for effective government as well. 
and essential for any cohesive and well-functioning society lies are always self-defeating they are corrosive they cannot stand and so it was clearly more about just speaking the truth it was about seeking justice and living justly but for Persians it was even deeper Herodotus just a page later writes they hold lying to be the most disgraceful thing of all and he hints that there is a religious reason for it it's part of their religion and their theology those who spoke and lived out truth were on the side of God for Persians Ahura Mazda and those who lived in the lies were turning themselves into dark demons and ugly monsters associated with Satan in Zoroastrian religion Angra Manu and they were destined they were destined for disgrace and damnation and so I wish I wish it to our scouts and to all of us to speak the truth that is to speak and seek and live out justice eternal justice because that is what really matters to do justice life kindness and walk humbly with our God and now you know why it is so utterly ignorant even offensive if not outright wild or foul to equate Cyrus with our current president and his thugs now you know why Isaiah could call Cyrus the ruler according to God's taste Persian ethos is a good example for our scouts and all of us it shows us that people of God can embrace this openness cosmopolitan nature diversity riding well shooting straight and speaking the truth respect for multiculturalism deep sense for fair play and being obsessed with truth and justice I'm not surprised Isaiah called Cyrus the anointed one of the Lord the Messiah of the Lord let us hope for such a government ourselves now I will invite you to stand up and read with me affirmation of faith which is taken from the confession of 1967 and it highlights just one aspect of this and that is the respect for other people other cultures and other races God has created the peoples of the earth to be one universal family in divine reconciling love God overcomes the barriers between siblings and breaks love every form of discrimination based on racial or ethnic difference real or imaginary the church is called to bring all people to receive and uphold one another as persons in all relationships of life therefore the church labors for the abolition of all racial discrimination and ministers to those injured by it 
congregations, individuals, or groups of Christians who exclude, dominate, or patronize their fellow humans, however subtly, resist the Spirit of God and bring contempt to the faith which they profess. Amen.